Thomas the Tank Engine is very proud of his branch line. He thinks it's the most important part of the whole railway. He has two coaches. They're old and need new paint, but he loves them very much. along the line, Thomas sings them little songs, and Annie and Clarabelle sing too. When Thomas starts from the station, he sings, Shh, 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 oh come along, shh, 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 we're rather late, shh, 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 oh come along, shh, we're rather late. Oh, come along. We're rather late. Oh, come along. And the coaches sing. We're coming along. We're coming along. We're coming along. We're coming along. They don't mind what Thomas says to them because they know that he's trying to please the fat controller. And they know, too, that if Thomas is cross, He's not cross with them. He's cross with the engines on the main line who've made him late. One day, they had to wait for Henry's train. It was late. Thomas was getting crosser and crosser. How can I run my line properly if Henry's always late? He doesn't realise that the fat controller depends on me. And he whistled very impatiently. At last, Henry came along. Thomas said, Huh, where have you been, lazy bones? Oh, oh, don't be cross, Thomas, please. My system is out of order. <laughs> no one understands my case. <laughs> oh, you don't know what I suffer. <laughs> oh, rubbish, you're too fat. You need exercise. Lots of people with piles of luggage got out of Henry's train and they all climbed into Annie and Clarabelle. Thomas had to wait until they were ready. At last, the guard blew his whistle. And Thomas started off at once. The guard turned round to jump into his van, tripped over an old lady's umbrella and fell flat on his face. By the time he picked himself up, Thomas, Annie and Clarabelle were steaming out of the station. Thomas was in a hurry to get away. Shh, 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 shh. Oh, come along. Shh, 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 shh. Oh, come along. Shh, shh, shh. Oh, come along. Shh, shh, shh. Oh, come along. Shh, shh, shh. But Clarabelle didn't want to come along. No, 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 no. I've lost my nice girl. No, 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 no. I've lost my nice girl. Annie tried to tell Thomas, We haven't a guard! We haven't a guard! We haven't a guard! But Thomas was hurrying. He wouldn't listen. And on he puffed. Shh, 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 shh. Oh, come along! Shh, 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 shh. Oh, come along! Shh, 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 shh. Oh, come along! 
Annie and Clarabel tried to put on their brakes, but they couldn't without the guard, and they kept crying out, Where is our guard? Where is our guard? Where is our guard? Where is our guard? Thomas, please stop! Thomas, please stop! Thomas, please stop! Thomas, please stop! But Thomas didn't stop until they came to a signal, and the signal said, Stop! Thomas was very cross, and he said to his driver, Oh, bother that signal! What's the matter? And Thomas's driver said, Well, I don't know. The guard will tell us in a minute, Thomas. They waited and waited, but the guard didn't come. Thomas got even crosser. Where is the guard? Annie and Clarabelle knew and they were crying, We've left him behind! We've left him behind! Yes, we left him behind! We left him behind! The driver, the fireman, and the passengers looked, and there was the guard running as fast as he could along the line with his flags in one hand and his whistle in the other. Everybody cheered him. He was very hot, so he sat down and had a drink and told them all about it. Thomas was very sorry. I'm, I'm very sorry, Mr. Guard. Oh, it wasn't your fault, Thomas. It was an old lady's umbrella. <laughs> Look, the signal's down. Let's make up for last time. Come on. Annie and Clarabelle were so pleased to have their guard again that they sang to Thomas as fast as you like. As fast as you like. Yes, as fast as you like. As fast as you like. And Thomas went as fast as he could. <laughs> and they reached the end of the line quicker than ever before. Thomas's branch line has a station by a river. As he rumbles over the bridge, he often sees people fishing. Sometimes they stand quietly by their lines. Sometimes they actually jerk a fish out of the water. Thomas often wanted to stay and watch, but his driver said, No, Thomas. What would the fat controller say if we were late? Hmm? Thomas thought it would be lovely to stop by the river. I should like to go fishing. Every time he met another engine, he would say, I should like to go fishing. They all answered, ha, Engines don't go fishing, sure. But that made Thomas impatient, and he would say, ha, Silly stick in the mud. Thomas generally had to take in water at the station by the river. One day, he stopped as usual, and his fireman put the pipe from the water tower into his tank. Then he turned the tap on, but it was out of order, and no water came. Thomas said to his driver, Oh, bother! Oh, bother! 
Oh, I am thirsty. Oh, never mind, Thomas. We'll get some water from the river. some rope and went to the bridge. Then the driver let the bucket down to the water. The bucket was old and had five holes in it, so they had to fill it, pull it up, and empty it into Thomas's tank as quickly as they could. Thomas's fireman sang, There's a hole in my bucket, dear Liza, dear Liza. <laughs> but the driver said, Never mind about Liza. You empty that bucket before you spill the water over me. Go on. At last, they finished, and Thomas started off. And Annie and Clarabelle ran happily behind. That's very much better. That's very much better. That's very much better. That's very much better. They puffed along the valley and were in the tunnel when Thomas began to feel a pain in his boiler, while steam hissed from his safety valve in an alarming way. <laughs> Thomas's driver said, Oh, there's too much steam. And the fireman opened the tap in the feed pipe to let more water into the boiler, but none came. Thomas groaned. Oh, oh dear, oh dear, I'm going to burst. Oh, 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 I'm going to burst. Oh, oh. They damped down his fire and struggled on. But Thomas was in a terrible state. I've got such a pain. I've got such a pain. Then, while the guard telephoned for an engine inspector and the fireman was putting out the fire, the driver wrote notices in large letters which he hung on Thomas in front and behind. Danger. Keep away. Soon, the inspector and the fat controller arrived. Oh, oh. cheer up, Thomas. We'll soon put you right. Yes. The driver told them what had happened, and the inspector said, Hmm, oh, so the feed pipe is blocked, eh? Hmm, 
Well, I'll just look in the tanks. He climbed up and peered in. Then he came down and said to the fat controller, Ah, uh, excuse me, sir, but uh, look in the tank, will you, and tell me what you can see. Oh, yes, uh, certainly, Inspector, certainly. He clambered up, looked in, and nearly fell off in surprise. <laughs> well, I never, well, I never, Inspector. Can you see fish? Goodness gracious me, how did the fish get in there, driver? Hmm? Thomas's driver scratched his head. Hmm. We must have fished them from the river. And he told them about the bucket. The fat controller laughed. <laughs> <laughs> well, Thomas, oh dear, so you and your driver have been fishing, eh? <laughs> but fish don't suit you, do they? No, we must get them out. Hmm. So the driver and the fireman fetched rods and nets, and they all took turns at fishing in Thomas's tank. When they caught all the fish, the station master gave them some potatoes. The driver borrowed a frying pan, while the fireman laid a fire beside the line and did the cooking. Then they all had a lovely picnic supper of fish and chips. The fat controller finished first. Hmm, yes. Hmm, that was good. Very good indeed. Hmm, but uh, fish don't suit you, Thomas, do they? <laughs> So you mustn't do it again. <laughs> and Thomas said, No, sir, I won't. Engines don't go fishing. It's too uncomfortable. Autumn was changing the leaves from green to brown. The fields were changing too, from yellow stubble to brown earth. As Thomas puffed along, he heard a tractor at work. One day, stopping for a signal, he saw the tractor close by. The tractor looked over the fence at Thomas and said, Pick the pocket, 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 the pocket. Hello, I'm Terence. I'm plowing. I'm Thomas. I'm pulling a train. Oh, what ugly wheels you've got. They're not ugly. They're caterpillar tracks. I can go anywhere with my tracks. I don't need rails. I don't want to go anywhere. I like my rails, thank you. And off went Thomas. Winter came, and with it, dark, heavy clouds full of snow.
Thomas's driver said, I don't like it. A heavy fall is coming. Mm, I hope it doesn't stop us. But Thomas saw that the snow was melting on the rails. And he said, Oh, this is soft stuff. There's nothing to it. And he puffed on, feeling cold but confident. They finished their journey safely, but the country was covered, and the rails were two dark lines standing out in the white snow. The driver said, mm, You'll need your snow plough for the next journey, Thomas. Yes. Snow plough? Huh. Snow plough? Oh. Snow is silly soft stuff. It won't stop me. Now, just you listen to me, young Thomas. We are going to fix your snowplough on, and I want no nonsense, please. The snowplough was heavy and uncomfortable, and made Thomas cross. He shook it, and he banged it. And when they got back, it was so damaged that the driver had to take it off. You're a very naughty engine, Thomas. And he shut the shed door for the night. Next morning, both driver and fireman came early and worked hard to mend the snowplow, but they couldn't make it fit properly. It was time for the first train. Thomas was pleased. <laughs> I shan't have to wear it. I shan't have to wear it. I didn't need that stupid old thing yesterday, and I shan't need it today. <laughs> Snow can't stop me. And he rushed off into the tunnel, thinking how clever he was. At the other end, he saw a heap of snow fallen from the sides of the cutting. Ha ha ha! Silly old snow! Silly old snow! Look out! I'm coming! I'm coming! Oh! 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 Cinders and ashes! I'm stuck! And he was. The driver said, Back, Thomas! Back! Thomas tried. But his wheels spun and he couldn't move. More snow fell and piled up around him. The guard went back for help, while the driver, fireman and passengers tried to dig the snow away. But as fast as they dug, more snow slipped down, until Thomas was nearly buried. Thomas was very upset. Oh, my wheel and coupling rods! I shall have to stop you till I'm frozen. Oh. 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 What a silly little engine I am. And Thomas began to cry. <laughs> and a bus came and took all his passengers away. and Thomas felt very lonely and very sad when he heard a noise in the tunnel. Yes, it was Terence, and he came chugging out of the tunnel. Hello, Thomas. No, don't worry. I'll soon get you out. He pulled the empty coaches away and came back for Thomas. Thomas's wheels were clear, but still spun helplessly when he tried to move. Terence tugged and slipped and slipped and tugged.
at last, he dragged Thomas into the tunnel. Thomas was very grateful. Thank you, Terence. Thank you. Your caterpillar tracks are really splendid. Ha <sighs> <laughs> ha! They can take me anywhere, Thomas. And Thomas's driver said, I hope you'll be sensible now, Thomas. I'll try to be. I'll try to be. And Thomas puffed off home. One day, Thomas was waiting at the junction when a bus came into the yard. Thomas said to the bus, Hello, who are you? What's that? Oh, I'm Bertie. Uh, who are you? I'm Thomas. I run this line. Oh, so you're Thomas, are you? Oh, yes. I remember now. You were stuck in the snow, didn't you? I took your passengers and Terence pulled you out, didn't he? Well, I've come to help you with your passengers today. This made Thomas very cross indeed, and he let off steam. Pshh! Help me! Pshh! Help me! Pshh! Oh, wow! I can go faster than you! <laughs> you can't. I can! You can't. I can! All right, I'll race you. The drivers agreed. The station master said, Right, are you ready? Steady. Go! And they were off. Thomas never could go fast at first, and Bertie drew in front. Thomas was running well, but he didn't hurry. Annie and Clarabelle were rather anxious. Why don't you go fast? 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 But Thomas said, Shh, 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 wait and see, wait and see, shh, 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 wait and see, shh, 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 wait and see. He's a long way ahead, he's a long way ahead. He's a long way ahead. He's a long way ahead. But Thomas didn't mind. He remembered the level crossing.
there was Bertie fuming at the gates while they sailed gaily through. Ha <laughs> ha! Goodbye, Bertie! The road left the railway and went through a village, so they couldn't see Bertie. They stopped at the station and Thomas called out, Quickly please! Quickly, please! Everybody got out quickly, and the guard whistled, and off they went. Thomas sang, Come along, shh, shh, come along, shh, shh, come along, shh, shh, come along, shh, shh. And Annie and Clarabelle sang, We're coming along, we're coming along, we're coming along, we're coming along. Hurry, 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 shh, 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 shh. Hurry, 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 shh, 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 shh. Hurry, hurry. Oh! For there, straight ahead, was Bertie crossing the bridge over the railway, and he was tooting triumphantly on his horn. Thomas groaned. Oh, bother! Oh, bother! Annie and Clarabelle wailed. He's a long way in front. A long way in front. He's a long way in front. A long way in front. But Thomas's driver said, Now steady, Thomas. We'll beat Bertie yet. 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 We'll do it. 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 Oh, bother, there's a station. And as he stopped, he heard something go. Goodbye, Thomas. You must be very tired. <laughs> Sorry I can't stop her. Uh, we buses have to work, you know. <laughs> Ta-da. The next station was by the river. They got there quickly, but the signal was up. Thomas thought, oh dear, we've lost now. But he felt better after a drink. Then James rattled through with the goods train. And the signal dropped, showing that the line was clear. Hurrah! We're off! Hurrah! We're off! And as they rumbled over the bridge, they heard a very impatient And there was Bertie waiting at the red traffic lights, while cars and lorries crossed the narrow bridge in the opposite direction. But as soon as the lights turned green, Bertie was off with a roar.
and soon he and Thomas were racing side by side up a valley. The passengers in the train and in the bus got very excited and started cheering and shouting. And now Thomas reached his full speed and foot by foot, yard by yard, he gained on Bertie till they were running level. Bertie tried hard, but Thomas was too fast. Slowly but surely, he drew ahead till he plunged into a tunnel, leaving Bertie toiling far behind. Thomas was very pleased. Ah, I've done it! Yes, I've done it! I've done it! Yes, I've done it! Shh, 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 shh. Yes, I've done it! So were Annie and Clarabelle. We've done it, hooray! We've done it, hooray! We've done it, hooray! We've done it, hooray! And on they went to the last station. The passengers gave Thomas three cheers and told the station master and the porters all about the race. When Bertie came in, they gave him three cheers too. And Bertie said, Phew, that was well done, Thomas. That was fun. But to beat you over that hill, I should have to grow wings and be an aeroplane. Thomas and Bertie now keep each other very busy. Bertie finds people in the villages who want to go by train. takes them to Thomas, while Thomas brings people to the station for Bertie to take home. They often talk about their race, but Bertie's passengers don't like being bounced about like peas in a frying pan, and the fat controller has warned Thomas about what happens to engines who race at dangerous speeds. So although, between you and me, they'd like to have another race, I don't think they ever will.